Froment's sign. The Froment sign occurs due to weakness of the adductor pollicis muscle, which occurs when the patient has an under nerve palsy. Here you can see the anatomy, the under nerve, and the adductor pollicis muscle, and how the under nerve innervates the adductor pollicis muscle. This is a very important point. The adductor pollicis muscle has two heads. Transverse head originate from the anterior body of the third metacarpal, and an oblique head, which originate from the base of the second and the third metacarpals, as well as the trapezoid and cavitate bones. The two heads of the adductor pollicis muscle then insert into the base of the proximal pharynx of the thumb and the ulnar sesamoid bone. The muscle is innervated by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. The adductor pollicis muscle function is to adduct the thumb. It is important in pinch strength. When the ulnar nerve is injured, the adductor pollicis function is lost and the thumb adduction will not occur. The Froment's sign is used to test the function of the adductor pollicis muscle. When pinching a piece of paper between the thumb and the index finger against resistance, the thumb IP joint will flex if the adductor pollicis muscle is weak. Here is the examiner's hand and here is a normal pinching of the patient because the patient has a normal on the nerve. And here there is an abnormal pinching because the patient has an injured on the nerve. The flexion of the thumb occurs by the flexor pollicis longus, which is innervated by the median nerve. This muscle substitutes the function of the adductor pollicis, which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Here there are multiple examples of a positive from and sign. The OK sign is different from the Froman's sign. The Froman's sign test is performed to determine the presence of an ulnar nerve injury. Bending the thumb when pinching a piece of paper is a sign of an ulnar nerve injury. The anterior interosseous nerve innervates the flexor pollicis longus. The integrity of the anterior interosseous nerve is tested by performing the OK sign. When asking the patient to make the OK sign by touching the tips of the index finger and the thumb together, the integrity of the anterior interosseous nerve allows flexion of the distal pharynx of the thumb and the index finger, creating the classic OK sign. But when the anterior interosseous nerve injury is present, the patient will be unable to bring together the distal pharynx of the thumb and the index finger, and he will be unable to do the OK sign. Also, in anterior interosseous nerve injury, there will be no sensory deficit. It is interesting to note that when testing the patient, and the patient is able to bend the thumb, then the patient either has a normal anterior interosseous nerve or the patient has an injury to the ulnar nerve. If the thumb does not bend, then this means the patient has a normal ulnar nerve but an injured anterior interosseous nerve. So if you see a patient is able to do the OK sign, then the patient has a normal anterior interosseous nerve. But if you see a patient with a piece of paper between the thumb and the index, and the patient is bending the thumb, then that patient has an under nerve palsy. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.